Alright, hello, greetings, and welcome everyone to this news update. The topics for today are as follows. The elephant in the room. At Terra's November update. Telos of EV rides in Gamma and interviews Chris and Jason and does an, uh, a factory tour. Uh, Telos of went on Aptera Owners Club and talked about his experience at Aptera. Aptera Owners Club talks about the Air in 2 video with Jason Hill. 48 volt architecture and the things that I liked. Alright, let's go ahead and get into it. The Cybertruck event occurred last week, and it was in equal measure fun to watch and a bit of a letdown. Fun to watch in that the production value was a little tenuous after the absolutely awesome exploded view, uh, like weight screen... weight screen? Yeah, exploded view weight screen that uh, went away and the whole thing uh, became very palpably awkward. Um, yeah, for some reason that kind of stuff makes me smile. Um, it was kind of a letdown because most of the uh, big things that Elon and Tesla harped on as features and specs wound up to be, in some respects, fairly overblown. Um, in most respects, pretty overblown. Yeah, I think that would have been a better way to put that. Um, I don't think that it's because they can't make these goals, specs, or features happen sometime in the long term. But in Elon's case, he's so serially optimistic that... He may have slightly uh, worked to their disadvantage in this particular case. Uh, with 11,000 pounds of towing capacity, 470 miles of range, uh, an optimal range, ex with, uh, sorry, that 470 miles comes with like an optional range extender scenario that they're putting out later on, um, and a neck injury inducing 2.6 seconds to uh, 60 miles per hour, um, I would imagine that um, most people would say that these numbers aren't anything to sneeze at. However, um, they don't meet the optimistic musings of uh, 25,000 pounds of towing or 500 plus miles of range that were strongly hinted at by people high up in the company. Now, how does this relate to Aptera? Well, um, in a lot of ways, Aptera and Cybertruck share like similar stories uh, on paper. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, I can already hear the uh, comment section uh, keyboard warriors going here, but yeah, Aptera is in a lot of ways similar to Tesla. Throwing that out there. Uh, essentially, they are both uh, companies that are very accepting of risk and uh, going against the grain. Uh, both companies have been using iterative design processes that ignore uh, like model years and things like that as a matter of course. Uh, heck, I can go on, but you kind of catch my drift. Their similarities are palpable. They are uh, real and tangible. Um, their similarities mean that Aptera has the opportunity to improve on Tesla's formula, and since Aptera isn't out yet, they can hit their promised release numbers. I still maintain that Aptera can absolutely stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tesla at some point. Uh, in fact, Aptera's smooth round design contrasts very nicely with uh, Tesla's more angular, sharper Cybertruck scenario. Long story short, I imagine that the next three to five years in the automotive industry will be extremely interesting uh, if Tesla stays on top and if Aptera makes it to market uh, and hits the kind of success that I see them hitting. Um, as they hit, uh, as they reach production mid to late next year. Um, Aptera's November update was phenomenal. Uh, yeah, just, that was it. It was phenomenal. Uh, they updated us on the tub stamping process by having Steve Fambro and Thomas Vecchi do an interview sitting in the production uh, tub, the first production tub ever produced. Um, I can't lie, I actually cheered when I saw the structure like mostly finished sitting like with people sitting in it um it, it was a it was an exciting time in the livingston household uh well for this particular livingston um anyway one of the cooler engineering bits that they discussed is how they already press in channels for wiring uh the high voltage sensors uh the, all that kind of stuff the uh, sorry the high voltage and the sensors not the high voltage sensors although there may be high voltage sensors i don't i don't know i don't know for sure 
There will be, probably, but I don't know. Anyway, long story short, high voltage, the sensors and the wiring and all that kind of stuff have been pressed into the tub. The channels for the wiring to go down are in there. Um, I thought that was really remarkable because uh, the process and the act of taking 200 plus pieces for uh, connecting the body to those particular components, uh, being pared down into one and making it available for um, a single part, like that stuff built into a single part, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. Um, I don't know if, if you guys are uh, getting the impact or if I am explaining the impact of this well enough, but yeah, it's... It takes a Herculean feat of engineering to pull 200 components down to just one. And it shows the dedication and the skill of both CPC and Aptera to get this particular body done and put into production uh, in such an efficient and part, uh, part minimal manner. Um, what, okay, so just kind of a, a sidebar. Uh, when I was a kid, I was in an electrical engineering class called uh, Intro to um, Electronics, where we did a bunch of uh, parts and components, like we did a bunch of circuit boards and wired a bunch of stuff up and things like that. And it was kind of a hobby of mine to remove components and see whether or not it would have the same functionality after the fact. Uh, I would take stuff out and add stuff and change things around. Um, the process of removing components from a system is arduous and and extremely long and difficult to do, at least in my experience. So yeah, again, bringing that stuff down to uh, a single part out of 200, like I can't even imagine. Like I took a 40 part component and was able to remove maybe two components, uh, three components, like a wire and, and a daisy chain. And I, I was able to do maybe one or two parts from a 30 part thing they took 200 parts and made it into one. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't talk enough about that. That is amazing to me. Um, there was even more awesomeness when it comes to the uh, to the the incentive to become an investor. They have changed it up a little bit. Um, there's they're allowing you to invest. Uh, get sorry, they're allowing you to get a thousand dollar discount on a two thousand dollar investment and all kinds of fun stuff. They're doing a special webinar uh, in a in just a few days here. Uh, for those who have invested. So if you're um, a person who uh, was kind of on the fence about investing in Aptera, now might be a good time to get in there. Um, on a side note, I am a financial advisor, or rather I am someone who advises people financially, but uh, I am not your financial advisor. So the information that I'm imparting on you is not something that I expect you guys to take to heart without talking to your invest uh, your investment advisor first. Uh, whoever you talk to about money, have them go through it. Somebody who has qualifications to talk to you about money, have them go through it, look at the numbers um, and understand what Aptera is and then advise you on the, the Aptera investing scenario. But me personally, it made sense to me. So, you know, here we are. I talked to my advisor. My advisor said, you know what? Not bad. So, yeah. Anyway, long story short, talk to your investor. I'm not giving financial advice right now. I'm just saying stuff that uh, makes sense to me because for my situation, Aptera is a good investment. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So easily my second favorite Aptera uh, or EV related YouTube channel is Talos of EV. Uh, he put out a fantastic couple of videos, or trio of videos now, uh, where he drove the Gamma vehicle and spoke with Chris Anthony and Jason Hill. Uh, quite frankly, these videos will now be the first ones that I show people when it comes to my impressions of the Aptera, or people who have impressions of the Aptera, because they are just that good. Um, the range of information and the quality of questions, particularly in the interview, are uh, my aspirations that next time I get to talk to any of the Aptera team, I am studying uh, how to do interviews and um, how to uh, talk to people in a, in a more uh, conversational manner in spite of the fact that I'm asking them questions about what they do. Like I'm, I'm, going, I'm doing the whole gamut, hoping that uh, when I do get that next interview that I will be that much more skilled and um, approachable when it comes to you know, doing interviews and things like that. It, Self-improvement is a big thing for me, so I tend to do that uh, 
regularly and this is just one of those things that I feel that uh, can be improved on and will be improved on. So yeah, uh, just noting that Taylosif has inspired me to be a better person. Um, yeah, just keep rocking it, man. Uh, do, keep doing the good work. Uh, yeah, next thing up, Steve from Aptera Owners Club did an interview with Jason Hill themed uh, a review of the review where they talked about Jason's impression of Steve's thoughts on the Aaron 2 video. Uh, this video series has always kind of uh, been a great way to glean um, excellent information about the design of the Aptera and uh, this time around combined with Talos of his video makes me far less skeptical skeptical of the porthole that they showed in the Air 2 reveal. Uh, at first I figured it might be too small, but both of them asked about it and both times they got a different uh, angle that kind of put into perspective the full view of that porthole and why it exists and that kind of thing. Those uh, questions helped me come to terms that, you know what, maybe this little porthole thing might make sense for a lot of reasons that I didn't think about before. So yeah, anyway. Uh, Great job, both of you guys. Keep it up. Um, yeah, you can find their videos in the description along with all the other videos and or topics that I talk about today. Now, the, uh, the collaboration or the, the, uh, the uh, meeting of minds that I was hoping would happen for a long time finally happened. Uh, Talos of EV went on to Aptera Owners Club and talked about his uh, view on the Aptera after he got the opportunity to drive it. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, interview. The first part came out yesterday. The second part should be coming out today as of the recording of this video. Um, I'm not entirely certain about today, but he, usually he releases them on daily intervals in, in portions. So hopefully we'll see part two um, sometime today. Uh, yeah, so those, uh, the interview there was really cool. They, they talked um, about all the fun things that, that, uh, Talos have did, and, um, yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a great interview. Uh, they both make really good content. If you haven't already checked their channels out, I would strongly advise it, because they are, uh, class acts and they're amazing people. Um, <clears throat> 48 volt architecture. Um, one of the things that they announced in the, uh, Cybertruck, uh, and reveal or, or uh, uh, delivery event was that they went to a 48 volt architecture. Um, a lot of people have been talking for a long time about 48 volt architecture in vehicles. Um, it will simplify wiring harnesses, uh, make it more efficient and all that kind of fun stuff. Long story short, 48 volt architecture is a huge deal 20 years, 20 plus years in the making. So if you guys want more information about 48 volt architecture or uh, what it is or how it's going to impact the, um, the automotive industry, you can uh, check out the video that I'm putting in the description on 48 volt architecture uh, from, uh, I believe it's from My Tesla Weekend. Let me, let, let me double check that because I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, it is not My Tesla Weekend. It is another channel, uh, Brighter with Herbert, I believe it's called. L let me stop butchering the name of this thing. Go, go ahead and check it out in the comments section. I'm pretty sure uh, that last name was right. But yeah, 48 volt architecture, what it means, um, how it's going to change the automotive industry, um, why it hasn't come into fruition yet, all of that kind of stuff is in that video. So I encourage you guys to check it out if you're curious. Uh, to learn more about 48 volt architecture and the first vehicle to implement or the first vehicle that I know of to implement 48 volt architecture in their vehicle. Uh, sorry, in its, in its inner workings, in its design. Alrighty, so things that I liked. Uh, Sandy interviewed Elon Musk. Uh, Sandy Monroe is, uh, needs no introduction. He is a legend in the automotive industry. Uh, he interviewed another legend in the automotive industry, uh, man changing the game, Elon Musk, in spite of his, um, you know, in spite of his, uh, personal life and all that kind of stuff, I acknowledge the fact that he is quite the gentleman, uh, when it comes to engineering and engineering prowess. Um, Sandy is another titan in the industry. They talk to each other. They, uh, uh, <laughs> basically talked about how awesome each other was and all that kind of stuff, but, um, most of that interview was actually 
talking about the process for the Cybertruck and how it came to be, uh, I cannot recommend that video more because uh, it is a lot of cool insights that we would not have normally gotten. Uh, so yeah, uh, there was also a really cool uh, sponsored by section, a commercial I guess, of a company called Three Dimensional Services Group. Um, I will link the video below, but it was funny to me that the lingering questions I had after that interview were more about when Sandy would do a full interview with the folks in that little sidebar commercial sponsored by section. Um, yeah, man, it was, uh, yeah, it was a thing. Uh, so another thing that I liked this week was, sorry, uh, for last week now, um, engineering, Engineering Explained did a video on the F1 engine. Uh, if you've ever been curious about how F1 engines work, why they were designed the way they were, uh, the things that they put into the engines, that kind of stuff, the aerodynamics of F1, they, they do a, a lot of the little general pieces of the puzzle as well as a really deep dive on the F1 engine. I would uh, recommend that video very much because it was very fun and very cool, uh, at least to the... Uh, the uh, engineering minded or the the curious um, yeah man that will be about it for this video um, I know that there are other topics that I did not uh, talk about that I will talk about uh, later on this week uh, in fact one of those topics is related to um, well let me let me go ahead and find it um, yeah one of them is related to a topic that I will talk about at this point um, yeah, there was a, a paper put out about how dire the climate situation actually is. Um, according to scientists, things are getting pretty, uh, pretty uh, serious, and uh, we need to start addressing that. But um, that topic is going to be something that I'm planning on discussing later on this week in a video um, that I'm going to put out that uh, relates to the auto industry and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I am the Ninjaneer. If you'd like to do the YouTubey things, please do those YouTubey things, the liking, the subscribing, the uh, ringing the bells and all that kind of jazz, sharing the video, all that stuff. Please do those things because I am so close to the uh, 500 subscriber mark, which apparently allows monetization options and things like that. Um, I am planning on using the money from the YouTube channel to directly invest back into the YouTube channel uh, so I can do uh, more, thing <clears throat> more things. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't necessarily have a lot of uh, numbers in my videos. Uh, in spite of the fact that I love numbers and I love like crunching the data and whatnot, I am not exactly great at presenting that data. So my hope is to find somebody who is good at presenting that data and uh, using the funds from the channel to pay that person for their time. So yeah, um, help me get there, man. Help me get to 500 ASAP so I can go ahead and uh, get you guys some better videos, better quality videos, more uh, graphics and, and charts and graphs and things like that. Um, I promise it'll be nifty. Uh, my ideas for the channel keep exploding and, and growing and getting bigger. Um, and they are expanding much more quickly than uh, I have time to implement or that I uh, have the money to implement. So yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, for what you've done so far. I appreciate uh, the, the, uh, the comments and all that kind of stuff. Uh, please comment on the video. Uh, what you thought I missed for the week, uh, the, the interesting pieces that I might have missed in the stories that I talked about, uh, uh, thoughts on, you know, whatever uh, you have in your mind, politics, all that kind of stuff. I, I talk about everything, uh, yeah, to everyone that will listen. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I am the Engineer, and I'll catch you guys next time.